Hello friends and earthlings, this is Amcat and welcome to another speed paint. The subject of today's video is my title page for my March bullet journal spread. It has been my plan all along mwahaha, to film the speed paints for my journal titles as I like to get quite involved with them and do paintings and designs for each one, so it's nice to see that process, I think. However, due to technical issues and a video that I wasn't happy with, I didn't release one for February, but I pulled it together for March and here we are, about to see how I made this page. Also, stay all the way to the end to see how February turned out, because I might just throw that in there at the end. <laughs> Ooh, and YouTube things. If you like what I do here, feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more painting and art related content. Now that's over, let's get into it. Back to March, my theme this month was Japanese food slash ramen, and alongside portraits, my other favourite thing to draw is food. So there was no way on this sweet green earth that I wasn't going to take this as an opportunity to paint food again. I love the range of colours and textures you get with food, and there's something so nice about organic shapes, they can give great flow to a page. With this, I needed something to fill the space, but also leave a gap for the title, and so I settled on two bowls with the text in the middle. Of course, one of them was going to be ramen, it was meant to be the theme, um, so I put that in there, but the other bowl was free to put anything that I fancied in. Now, I'm a big fan of Japanese food, I love to cook, and when I was in Japan, I went to a cookery class, which was so interesting and fun. Cooking is something I enjoy doing, I find it relaxing and also rewarding because guys, you get to eat what you've made? If that wasn't a good reward, I don't know what it is. I love days where I can try new recipes, new cooking techniques, and because cooking can be so tied into a culture and its history, you can learn quite a lot about a place or its history through its cooking and cuisine. I'm also reminded of a time in Japan actually where I made a translation slash speaking error at a restaurant and ended up having the most extravagant meal I've probably ever had, totally by accident, um, which was very nerve wracking, but that's a story for another day. Um, one meal I can always eat at any time, anywhere would be katsudon. I just think it's perfect and delicious. It's not crazy with the ingredients, and I actually made a pretty decent one at home a couple of times from a recipe book, um, but if you ever asked me what I want to eat, I'd always eat a katsudon. So that was pretty much a no-brainer for what to put in the second bowl. I never painted one before, but it was very exciting to try. One thing I want to mention is that as this video goes on, you'll notice that after the katsudon painting, I changed location. Um, but that's okay, because it's to somewhere altogether more aesthetic and well lit. Um, and another thing is that, unusually for the UK, these last couple of weeks have been beautiful and sunny and warm for UK standards. And so there was a bit later on in this video where some light shafts make the video a little bit hazy. Um, I just want to apologise for that. The setup I had going was the best for the light in the shadow that I could work on for the room. And when I was painting it kind of the lighting changed and that's when that happened. Um, and I totally didn't notice until after filming. Uh, but it goes away pretty quickly so no worries there. A little side note, actually, um, that when I started filming my speed paints, I started coming across challenges that I hadn't really thought about before when I'd first decided that I wanted to start a YouTube channel. Firstly, this includes things like light and shadow. For all of my videos so far, I've been filming in the morning or when there's the most light in the places that I can film because I don't use a lighting setup. So far, I'm quite happy with the quality of the videos, but I might think about investing in some lighting later on. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, back to the point. Uh, this means that my tripod casts shadows and these change as the day goes because usually I'll sit down to paint for several hours, which is something I'm learning about sort of as I go on in this process. Similarly, the intensity of the light changes naturally and so that's something that I need to bear in mind. Another thing that I find strange and that I'm getting used to is that when I paint or do crafts, I usually like to get right up close to whatever it is I'm working on, like really close, head on the page level close. I'm not sure why I do this, I mean, I like to be able to see really clearly what I'm doing, but I mean, it is a bit unnecessarily close, it's just how I've always got to painting really. Anyway, so when I first started filming, because of this, my head kept dipping into the frame, which obstructs what I'm working on and does not help the video quality at all. So I have to pay real attention now to my framing and making sure that I'm aware of the boundaries where I'm leaning so I don't dip into shot. <laughs> at first it felt a bit weird and unnatural, but I think I'm getting used to that. Why is it that I always make a smaller side and then launch into a whole side story about something random? I just get so carried away and then I forget where I even started off. Pull it together, Amcat. It's time to get serious and technical. 
Right, so for this painting I used acrylics because acrylic is one of my fave mediums. It's something I've used for a long time and I enjoy using it. You also get a nice vibrancy with acrylics. You can water it down and layer it if you want or build it thicker. So there's lots of ways you can achieve the finish that you're looking for. You can use pens, markers, watercolours, uh, pencils for these kinds of pages instead if you'd like. But I wouldn't recommend oils because they take a thousand years to dry, which is really good um, if you're using them for something that you want really blended, um, just not for this. And also because the oil will affect the paper on the following page as it seeps through. And you also might get some transfer onto the page next to this one because it does take so long to dry. I did a little detailing at the end with my white Sakura Jelly Roll pen because I like to bring out a couple of highlights, especially in the broth with the bubbles and at the edges. I think it adds to the illusion of liquid in the broth here. Usually for these pages, I tend to do the illustrations or the paintings on a separate piece of watercolour paper and then glue them in, which is what I did for January and February. But after doing the ramen flood spread in my bullet journal weekly spreads, I realised I could work straight onto the page quite effectively with these acrylic, acrylic paints. And because of the layering I usually do with my pages, there wasn't transfer that was visible on the other side, so it didn't really matter too much. When working with new papers, it's good to test how water works on the paper because this is linked to how you can blend and also how the medium will interact with the paper. For example, the sketchbook in which I did my Nikolai speed paint is a multimedia paper, which I noticed that it doesn't like to blend much when you use watercolors. The paint seeps in pretty quickly, so you have to blend initially um, layer thinner layers to get a smooth blend or use quite a lot of water when you're going. So these are all things to bear in mind when you're deciding how to start your painting. If you can do some little tests and see how the medium works with your paper before you jump right into your final piece, that is a great thing to do. When looking at my voiceover notes, the last thing that I wrote down to cover was titled In Defense of Red Lettering. And I think this meant to be a hint that I should explain why I chose to write March in red paint rather than any other color. Also, spoilers for the end of this video, Oh, the high stakes of speed paints. So for the March title page, I tried to use a brush strokey calligraphic style font because I love these and think they can add a little bit of flair to a page like this. I also think Japanese calligraphy and artwork kind of links in here. Um, if I feel like it's quite heavy on the brush stroke style and that's incredibly beautiful, which is why I try to reference it a lot where I can. Anyway, so the paint I used here was a bright and vibrant red. In my last video, you'll notice that the red comes in again very prominently in the calendar page, so that ties those two pages together quite nicely. I also feel that it complemented the warmth of the broth with the katsudon crumb as well, whilst differing enough from the blue tones of the bowls to stand out. Hi guys, quick update. So you will notice that between the katsudon and the ramen bowl, um, the rice and the spring onions will have magically appeared. And that is because my camera ran out of battery um, and also the light died and it got really dark and not very nice for filming. But I'd already put out all of the paint and quite a lot of paint as well and I didn't wanna waste it. So I thought I would just finish off those bits, get this one finished for today. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't film that. I just didn't wanna waste the paint that I already had. Um, but we can carry on now with the ramen bowl. Now, you might think that using black or white uh, might have given a stronger contrast from the background and made it easier to read. And yes, that is very true. Both of these tones would stand out, especially the black. Um, and in comparison, the bright red is a bit jarring on the eye, perhaps. But the look I was going for here is one that I've seen before in some typographic posters in which there would be a photo or an image and then the typography over the top in a different bright colour. Um, some I've seen are reds, yellows, bright teal, stuff like that. Sometimes with a reduced opacity as well so the image behind comes through and makes the text look like a wash over the image. I really like that idea, especially because the text is quite flat against the 3D image. Um, it's a nice contrast so that's why I did the writing this way. I think you do lose the M from March a little bit, but I'm generally happy with the way the letters look. Um, you can always change it if you were going to do something similar. Also, red always makes me think of Japan. Not only is it in the flag, but in temples, in the Tori gates you see, especially in places like the Fushimi Inari Shrine, um, in geisha makeup. And the more I looked into it, actually, I went on a bit of a Google spree with this. I found a lot more reference to red in Japanese culture. I found an article that stated that the red kimono communicated a message of protection and prosperity and that the Miko Shinto shrine maidens 
wear um, a sort of special red trousers as well. Um, so I suppose in that sense, it could be sort of related, especially with the Tory gates as well, to this kind of religious side of things. Um, another website stated that red was connected to prosperity and wealth and that it was one of the four traditional colours of Japan, which included red, white, black and blue. Um, the last website I looked at said that samurai wore red as a symbol of strength and power in battle. Um, this fact kept popping up in a few places, but the other ones I found sort of here and there, so I'm not sure how reliable they are, but I'll link the most informative article I found down below if you're interested in reading that. Um, I think it's definitely a topic to look into um, at some point. It's quite interesting, I find. I like to keep these speed paints as a mixture of a little bit of voiceover and then a nice amount of painting, which is just relaxing music to sit and enjoy. So now we've covered theming, the technicalities of this piece and got far more well acquainted with the color red than we ever thought we would. I think you guys deserve some time to just enjoy this painting process. See you later, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.
So this is the final piece. Thank you so much for watching until the end to see how this all came together. In total, it didn't take too long and I didn't do the most detailed version in the world of this that I could, but I'm happy with it. Particularly the katsudan at the top. That was something new and I'm happy with the final product there. Ooh, hello, what's this? Is this February? You bet your sweet ass it is. So for February, I wanted to paint a moody romantic image of a landscape and I was really interested in urban scenes and images that portray urban spaces in a dreamy, magical sort of way. Now, near where I live, there is a petrol station, this one, and at night in the dark with all the lights on, it looks really beautiful. So that's what I decided to paint. I get real Edward Hopper vibes from this, especially his painting of the cafe at night. And I think that's where I got the inspiration really. I hated this most of the way through when I was painting it. I don't often paint landscapes and I'm not that good at them, but I forced myself to finish it. And the more I got into it, the more I liked it. I especially like the way the paint pools and layers on the concrete at the front with the blues and the greens. If I were to do it again, I might soften the white highlights a bit, but otherwise I like this page and I hope you do as well. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.